Celine's journey into planet Atropos is filled with mystery as she unravels the past of the Sinus civilization trying to make sense of the never-ending loop she is stuck in. But right on the surface of Returnal, Housemark, developer of the game, establishes a connection with Greek mythology that goes deep within the story, providing clues that are fundamental when trying to understand its development and extremely confusing endings. In this new episode of the Did Die series for Returnal, we take a first look at the biggest references that the game does to Greek mythology and try to make sense out of it to get one step closer to understand Selene's journey. Before we begin, I gotta say that I'm not a big mythologist myself. All the information you're going to see here is from different websites that I will list in the description of the video in case you want to continue researching on your own. So, if by any chance you find a piece of information or interpretation that is not 100% accurate, please don't annihilate me in the comment section down below. Let's start with the most important character of all, and that is this guy. Yep, the final black squid that we meet in the first end of the game is a direct reference to Chaos, the first of the primordial gods to emerge at the dawn of creation before Gaia, Tartarus, and Eros. His name means gap or chasm, he's the grandfather of Atropos, and is often referenced as the beginning of everything. I didn't know about this reference until I started searching for some artwork for my last video on the Hype Mind, where I stumbled across this concept art by Ilmari Kumpunen, associate art director and concept designer at House Marky, where he literally writes the word chaos on this concept illustration. In the first ending of the game, we meet Chaos after defeating Ophion, reaching the deepest point of the Abyssal Scar, the Cosmic Prison. And yes, that name reference is never actually mentioned in the game but both the illustrations by Ilmari on Art Station have that title, so we are safe to assume that that's canon. Here in this cosmic prison, we find Ikor, who we'll talk about later on this video, floating over it, along with Chaos, who appears as Selene tries to reach the goo-like substance in the center. What's most interesting here is the possible meaning of Chaos, as it unlocks Selene's memory so she can remember what actually happened years ago in that fatal car crash. I believe Chaos is the one that is actually controlling the time loop in which Selene is imprisoned. As we know now, Chaos is the first of the primordial gods existing before the creation of everything, so it makes sense that it keeps resetting the cycle every time Selene dies until she finally reaches the true ending of the game by escaping on her car and becoming the White Shadow herself. A curious detail is the presence of Chaos in Selene's life in the figure of this plushie named Octo that Helios always carries around. In fact, there is this strange cutscene where Helios tries to escape the White Shadow, but he ends up caught anyway, leaving Octo behind. After that scene, he looks into the telescope telling Octo that he needs to stay and help her mom. I have to go now, Octo. Please stay and help her. Which is probably linked to the first ending when Chaos, or Octo, is the one that drags Selene back to the depths so she can continue until she recovers the keys to her car and finally escape. If we follow this train of thought and take a look at Chaos Descendants, we will meet Atropos, one of the three Morai sisters, also known as the Fate. Atropos' name means the unalterable or inflexible, making all of the decisions of the other two sisters irreversible, being she the one that cuts the thread of life of men. The ever-changing biomes, rooms, enemies, and encounters that Selene may have on either the past or the future are all aligned to her destiny and she will always end reaching the highest point in the Dark Citadel or the bottom of the Abyssal Scar, no matter what she does. The really interesting thing though is that planet Atropos transforms itself as Selene's life passes from the past cycle to the future cycle. The Overgrown Ruins transform to the Equine Ruins, Greensome Wastes become the Fracture Wastes, and the Dark Citadel is now changed to the Abyssal Scar. In Greek mythology, Atropos is basically the end of the line for every mortal, cutting the thread and determining that individual's death, while Lachesis, one of the other three sisters, was the one responsible to measure the thread, deciding destiny itself. I think Lachesis would be a better option to name the planet after because of her actions that fit in a more natural way, one is an executioner and the other is more like a planner. But perhaps Atropos just sounds cool and, well, that's it. 
now that we have the setting and the beginning of it all, let's continue with our main protagonist herself, Selene. In Greek mythology, Selene is the goddess of the moon, daughter of Hyperion, Titan god of light, and Thea, Titan god of sight. Riding every day a chariot drawn by two winged horses traversing the sky. This is really interesting in many aspects. First and foremost, the visual representation of Selene in either of her aspects as an astral scout and as a white shadow. The white color is directly referenced to Selene in the myths with her pale skin, which also translates to Selene's outfit. I believe that the different suits that Selene has in her ship are in some way a visual representation of the faces of the moon. With the Model 5 having a more prominent presence of white and yellow, probably symbolizing the waxing divas, and white shadow, the one that could be considered the purest form of Selene, represents the full moon. Meanwhile, the Model 9 and 14 suits that have more yellow and black tonalities could fit in the one in Gibbous and one in crescent faces of the moon, or even the new moon. But if I have to point out the thing that strikes me the most about these suits is the little easter egg of the white shadow being an Apollo-era astronaut, which was, in fact, the space program that the US government launched from 1961 until 1972, leading to landing on the moon by the first human being. So, you know, a moon landing, Selene, moon, I know it's a little bit dumb, but this really got me excited. Before we share more information about Selene, I will continue with two additional characters and come back and forth as each one of them has a different relationship with their protagonist and reveals interesting details on Selene herself during the game. Let's start with Helios. In Greek mythology, Helios is the titan god of the sun, son of Hyperion and Thea, meaning that she should be Selene's brother, not her son. They actually make a natural duality as Helios himself also has a chariot that drives daily from east to west to illuminate the earth. And by the way, can we take a moment to point out the fact that Helios being the name of the ship is pretty awesome too? To me, this makes a direct relationship to the chariot that both ride, and it is a way for Selene to always be accompanied by her son during her expeditions as a member of Astra. The decision behind why to use Helios as Selene's son instead of his brother may be how Smart is trying to pull some sensitive strings here and there, as it is easier as an audience to care about a child than a full-grown adult. I know that there are really good family stories out there in video games, but having tiny Helios in Returnal feels something very soothing and natural. Every time Selene starts the cycle, Helios is her motivation no matter the point in the story where you're at. During Act 1, her purpose is to go back to Earth, escaping Atropos, reuniting with her son. During Act 2, once you have met Chaos and realize what really happened, the focus is to abandon the figure of Helios represented in the ship and try to repair the sun plate, another representation of her son, bring him back the power to the house again, and with it, come to a closure. The idea of trying to reunite Selene and Helios is perfect from a storytelling standpoint, as the sun and moon have always been seen as two parts of a whole in different civilizations. But if we look in Greek mythology, there is a third sibling that the game leaves out unmentioned. Eos, the third daughter of Thea and Hyperion, Goddess of Dawn. I think it was probably for the best that Housemark left Eos out of the picture, as the story really flows in a very effective way with only Helios and Selene. Every time you go inside the house, you uncover many clues in a very limited fashion, both in time and space to explore, but it is long enough for you to grasp an idea of the relationship between both of them, and adding a third character in the mix would make things slower and just too complicated. The final major character we have in the story is Thea, Selene's mother. In Greek mythology, she is a titan goddess of sight, mother of Selene and Helios. And this is the point in the video where I could probably step into conspiracy territory by sharing some of what I'll use for my final video where I explain the ending of the game. You see, there are several elements in Returnal that point out the possibility that Thea and Selene may be the same person. And the key to this connection begins with Thea herself. But I'll save the heavy details for later and instead focus on a unique aspect trait we can observe in Selene that ties with Thea's mythology, her heterochromia. Within the many opportunities that you have exploring the house, you can find Thea's portrait, where you can see that, well, Thea and Selene actually look the same. 
This may obviously be because of Thea's strong genes that were passed down to Celine. I'll give you that. But if we examine Celine's eyes before and after the car accident, we can see that the color is different from one moment to the other. One of the many reasons a person can develop heterochromia as an adult is as a consequence of an eye injury, and this particular situation could have developed due to the car crash. This accident and the whole aftermath where we finally see Celine's eyes with different colors might be the hint that housemarks trying to slightly present us, showing that Celine's heterochromia is a glimpse of the true identity to Thea, the goddess of sight. I know this may sound like a big leap, but I will present more details about this in the final video in the Deep Dive series for Returnal. Now, with the main characters out of the way, let's explain other minor references to the Greek mythology that are not that deeply rooted in story development and ending, but sure make cool points to talk about. Moving on, we have Astra. In the game, Astra is a space exploration corporation that Selene forms part of, while in Greek mythology, Astra are the five gods of the wandering stars and planets, children of Eos, goddess of dawn, and Astraios, god of astronomy. The term Astra Planeta can be translated as star wanderer, but of course, they are more commonly known as the wandering stars, or the classic planets. And in antiquity, the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn were all believed to be heavenly bodies that moved across the sky differently compared to fixed stars and constellations. Next, we have Icor, the fluid that flows like blood in the veins of gods. Icor is said to be toxic to humans, killing them instantly if they came into contact with it. There is actually a very cool cutscene that is very easy to miss unless you grind for a while the fifth biome, the Fracture Waste, where Selene encounters Icor in a lonely room. Upon trying to touch it, a black hand reaches out mimicking Selene's. This immediately brought back some weird Ocarina of Time flashbacks where I thought we were going to fight a dark Selene, but sadly that wasn't the case. We can also see other instances of Icor floating above the cosmic prison, on top of a pit in the Echoing Ruins, and in the different fabricators, giving the hint that the hive mind probably used it along with the Ovalites to fabricate artifacts and consumables for their personal benefit. Let's continue with Hyperion, one of the leaders of the hive mind imprisoned in the Echoing Ruins vault. He is a husband of Thea in Greek mythology, the titan god of heavenly light, whose name means the Watcher from above. He was one of the four Titan brothers who conspired against Uranus to be later punished into the pit of Tartarus. Selene's father is never mentioned in the story, only in Scout Log number 42, where she briefly talks about him and I quote, the severed achieved clarity in madness by climbing the throne of exaltation. My father once sat atop it, every organ pipe chanting in a way I never could. This is a direct reference to the boss fight with Hyperion, where he is playing his organ. Finally, let's close this video with the rest of the several leaders, starting with Fricka, the personified spirit of horror and trembling fear, a form of Phobos and Deimos, both gods or daemons of fear. Ixion, the only human reference in the game, king of Lapids, the most ancient tribe of Thessaly, betrayed Zeus' trust by flirting with Hera, giving birth to the centaurs by coupling with a cloud-shaped Hera decoy. He was later expelled from Olympus and bound to a winged fury wheel for eternity. Finally, there's Ophia, the first titan king of heaven, ruling the world with Urino. In the early days, Kronos wrestled him for the throne and cast him defeated into the ocean. And this is the second of the pieces of the puzzle that may help to understand what the end of Returnal really means. In the meanwhile, be sure to check out other videos in the Deep Dive series right here while you wait until I publish the next one. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later on the B-Side.